So anyway, so she's, uh, so she's an alumni from here, actually. She studied civil engineering here in 1995. But sorry, okay, I'm probably going to go there. Anyway, I'll stop your Now you're telling them how old I am. <laughs> Okay, so this is my sister Jennifer Wells. She's a teacher at Upper Canada College, and I'll end it there. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to it with my sister, so it's all right. Um, okay, so as my introduction said, I did go to Waterloo for civil engineering, and I now teach at Upper Canada College. And if you're not familiar with it, it's an all boys school in Toronto. And I'm here to talk about how a lot of the people I graduated with um, didn't actually go on to pursue engineering as careers. They went on to do a lot of other amazing things. And it was because they took engineering that they were able to do this. So. Uh, but first off, I've been a teacher for 15 years, so I'm used to asking the questions. So I'd like to ask you guys with a show of hands, how many of you actually use your undergraduate degree right now in the job that you do? Okay, thank God, this is what I was hoping. All right, so as I, as I expected, not many people are using that. So the <laughs> idea is that if, you know, my whole point of my talk, as you'll see, is if, you're, if statistically you're not going to be using your undergraduate degree, then make sure it's a good one. Um, so... <laughs> When I knew I was going to be coming here, I actually uh, surveyed my own students, and I started off by surveying uh, the grade 8s. I teach grade 12s this year, but because the average age was eight, nine, ten, or grade 8, 9, 10 for this, I just wanted to see what the younger guys uh, would answer when I did this. So it was anonymous, so I didn't know who was saying what. I wanted to find out what they thought an engineer did. And to be honest, these were the, the typical answers that came up from the grade 8s, and honestly, most of them just said, I don't know. Because I said, that's a fine answer, and a lot of them said, I don't know. But I also asked them, what do you want to be when you grow up? And 60% of the grade eight said, I don't know. So, you know, it's not surprising as they're pretty young and it's, you know, it's expected that they don't know what they want to do. But then I did the same, asked the same questions to my grade 12s because you'd think, you know, these are, they're right now, some of them that are applying overseas are in the process of doing the applications. So they, they need to know what an, if they're applying in engineering, what, they, what that is. And they also need to know what it is they want to be when they grow up. So with the grade 12s, Again, typical answers, designs and build things, create things. Um, when you're done reading the first part, I'd like to actually draw your attention to the last two points because two boys actually answered this, and I just thought it was kind of funny that in grade 12, not one kid would say, I don't know. So they had to come up with fancy ways of saying, I don't know. <laughs> Yes, this is UCC, the leaders of our country, too. <laughs> anyway, but I was surprised in that when I asked the grade 12s, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I didn't just make this up for the sake of my speech. 80% said, I don't know. But they're all applying to university. And so I'm like, well, what are you applying into? And uh, various reasons. I mean, there obviously is a lot of kids that do the doctor, lawyer, business thing, but 80% were like, ah, I don't know what I want to I be. So again, this idea of being, if, if you're going to go into an undergraduate degree just for the sake of it, you may as well make sure it's a good one. Anyway, I'm going to take the next five or 10 minutes to talk about my story. And forgive me, I'm actually just going to read this part because I, I just don't want to miss any of the points I wanted to say to you. And the reason I'm telling you my story is because I wasn't your typical high school student who got A's and everything. And chances are a lot of you sitting here, your sons and daughters, you know, struggle in math, struggle in all aspects. So I want to show you that your kids can struggle in, in, in high school and still have successful careers. So, all right, I, I, was, I was one of those kids in high school that knew, it, as my sister said, that I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. I wasn't one of those I don't know 80% people. I didn't know what I wanted to teach, but I knew I wanted to be a high school teacher. The only reason I fell into math and science was because I was better at that. I didn't really like, well I, well, I wasn't good at history, English, geography. I was just better at math and science. And then to be honest, I wasn't really great at anything. I didn't like high school. I found it boring. I, uh, I was really more concerned with my social life, as a lot of kids are. Or in my case, my lack of a social life. I went to an all-girls school. So I don't think I talked to a boy until uh, I was in grade 11, which my mother was probably happy about. But. Uh, I was the kind of student who just stayed at the class average to keep you know, the teachers off my back, to keep my mother off my back. And uh, I, I could have done better, but I, just, I didn't want to. Um, I had more potential, I just didn't have the interest or the drive. Um, then it came time to picking electives. For us, it was in grade 10. And my mom said, you're picking higher math and, and science. And I was like, okay. You know, I was afraid of her, I just did whatever she said. <laughs> And the school contacted my mother and said, no way, she can't handle it, she's not doing this. 
But my mother knew me very well, and she said to the administration, no, no, she will get class average no matter where you put her. <laughs> and so, the reason I'm telling you that is because, you know, not at my school, I mean, we have small class sizes, but in most public schools, sometimes you have 30 to 40 kids in a class. We can't know your kids as well as you do. Make sure you know your kids, know their abilities, and fight for them if you have to. Because if my mother hadn't for let me force the school to put, me, to put me into those classes, I wouldn't have been able to go on the path I did, and I might not be, you know, I didn't, maybe I wouldn't have been able to get in engineering and then the whole teaching, and so just fight for your kids if you have to. Um, I have to say, the fact you're even here today is amazing, and I applaud you for taking such an interest in your, in your children's futures. I've met a lot of parents uh, over my years of teaching who, who don't know their kids or don't seem to care, unfortunately. So I'm just, thank you for coming. This is great. Um, okay, back to me. So I grew up in Quebec, as uh, my sister said. And so there we go to SAGEP. So SAGEP is two years pre-university. It's, it's grade, like grade 12 and 13. So um, I applied into the pure and applied sciences. And again, I didn't like school at this time. And I went into sciences because my mother was a professor at McGill. And her whole thing was, do sciences, it keeps your doors open. And again, I was just better at that stuff. So I thought, OK, this is what I'm going to do. Um, so I went, into, I went into Sage Up in Sciences. And to be honest, this is actually where I completely changed. I don't know if it was the boys. I don't know if it was the independence. I just grew up a little. But I actually liked Sage Up. And I did really well there. And thank God I did, because I was able to get into Waterloo for engineering. <laughs> but uh, it was, I, I just, I changed. I changed. And again, the reason I'm telling you this is because at least once a year, I'll get a call from a parent saying, oh, my son, he's got so much potential, he's not using it. And often, I, I just say, you know what, just give it the summer. Sometimes kids just have to grow up. Now, I know it's not always the case, but often it does happen that kids, they just need some time. And I was exactly one of those kids. You just need to grow up a little. You need to mature a little so that you have, this, you have the drive to do what you, what you can do. Um, OK, so then I, it comes to me applying to university. All I knew was that I wanted to be a high school teacher. I still wanted to be a high school teacher. And I figured math and science, because those are the things I'm good at. Now, my sister, who graduated from McGill in metallurgical engineering, convinced me to apply into engineering. And mainly her, at the time, her reasoning was because should I change my mind, I would have something to fall back on. And it, it was, she had a great point. At the time, it was really hard to get into teachers college. And there weren't a lot of jobs open to teachers in those days. I mean, even now, it's still actually they're laying off a lot of public school teachers right now. So this way, I thought, yeah, if I don't, you know, if I can't get a teaching job, I can, I can always be an engineer. And as well, I, I, I preferred the applied uh, side of math and science. The pure theoretical stuff, I didn't, I didn't really get it. I didn't like it. I thought it was boring. So it, was, it just made more sense. And as an aside, I also want to say that um, a lot of research shows that girls don't like pure math and science. They don't, they don't, unless there's a reason to be doing it, which, you know, it's logical, they don't like it. So unfortunately, a lot of high school teachers only look at math from a, a pure point of view. And because I have the engineering background, I'm able to look at more of the applied stuff. So keep this in mind if your daughter ever says she isn't good at math or she doesn't like it. It could just be that her teacher needs to present it in a different way. Uh, OK, so I went to Waterloo for engineering. And I'll be honest, I didn't love the program when I started it. Sorry. <laughs> But enable, until I was able to pick my electives, I basically was just trying to get through it, getting that class average still. Um, but once I was able to specialize, my attitude completely changed. I specialized in environmental engineering for my last two years, and I loved it. I could not get enough of it. As a result, at the end of my five years here, I applied to do um, a master's in wastewater treatment, and I got accepted. But I was still applying uh, to all the universities for Teachers College, and I, I got into U of T there as well. And it was actually, honestly, a tough choice. So at the end of the five years, I loved it so much that I was like, well, what should I do here? But I thought, Teachers College is only one year. I'll do that. I can always come back and do my master's. And, but and as things went, I fell in love with teaching, and then I just never went back. And then just life took over from there. Now, if I could do it all over again, would I have done anything differently? Because I'll admit, there's a much easier path to take to become a high school math teacher. <laughs> but uh, the answer is a definite no. Firstly, I had schools lined up to interview me at a time when there weren't many jobs available. But more importantly, it was the skills I had to acquire to get through my degree that has made me a great teacher, a great colleague, a great employee. Basically, I know what it is to work hard and to, to, to achieve a goal. In that process, I have learned time management, organization, problem solving, discipline, leadership, communication, and most importantly, how to work successfully with people, with individuals, and with a team. 
as well, and this is a skill I value on a daily basis, being in an all-boys school, I learned how to work with men, which isn't always easy. Um, there were only 14 girls in my class of, there was probably, I'm trying to even remember now, probably 100 or 120, and there was 14 girls. So all your projects, you were stuck working with the boys. And when I started at UCC, um, for three years, I organized a group of students um, to compete in the Canada First Robotics Competition. It's an extremely demanding program where you have to build a robot that competes a sporting event. It's a really short span of time. And the first year we did it with just the boys, and it was great. And after that, I thought, you know what, let's get some girls involved here. So BSS is our sister school. I organized with them that we were going to have the boys and girls work together to work on this robot. And uh, I wanted that because I actually really wanted the girls' input. I wanted their view on problem-solving skills. But I spent most of my time just dealing with the interaction between the two of them because it really is amazing how the, the different genders view the same problem and how they attack the same problem. So going back, I was having flashbacks all the time to my five years here, you know, being frustrated trying to work with uh, my male counterparts. So it was a great skill that I learned to help the, the students work together as, as boys and girls. Um, okay, so that was really, that's how I came to where I am today. Um, the other thing quickly, when I knew I was coming to speak here, I actually emailed 20 of the classmates that I graduated with and just to see what they're doing now. And amazingly, most of them aren't doing engineering, but when they were asked, they all said they wouldn't have changed the route that they took. The, this, again, as I'm saying, the skills they learned is what they're using every day in the jobs that they do. So I wanted to show you a brief overview. Um, out of the 20 people I contacted, there were eight that were still working in industry, and uh, a whole bunch of them had actually gone on to do their MBA. And um, I was actually talking to the guidance counselor at our school, and she was saying that at Rotman, which is the University of Toronto MBA program, on a given year, 30 to 40 percent of the students are engineers. So it's a common thing that people do. So first off, one of my friends, Chris Day, who works in Mexico, he's a uh, well, you can see what he does here. I just wanted to show you that he was one of the few whose main job is still quite technical. Um, but I just wanted to show you that even at that, he's required on a daily basis to work in sales, accounting, shipping. I mean, just like when I was in school, the, all the projects we worked on, there's a whole range of things you have to know how to do. So even though his job is technical, he's still doing a whole bunch of stuff. And the next one is another friend of mine, Mike Flood. Again, his job is, is quite technical on a daily basis, but what I wanted to highlight was actually something he wrote to me at the end of the email, and this wasn't at all prompted. He said this on his own. So he said, I feel strongly about highlighting the importance of communication skills, relationship management, and innovation. These are a few key skills that the technical side of an engineering degree doesn't necessarily teach you, but are valued skills that most engineers, and then you wrote, well, anyone for that matter, will require in order to be successful. I feel I gained these skills and more while completing my degree. So even at that, he just, uh, he said it was the best thing he could have ever done. And then another one of my friends, Mark Fauché, he actually was one of the ones that he did work at, he was doing transportation, I think, for about three or four years. He went back to do his MBA, and now he's actually working at a, a pretty big investment firm, and he's absolutely loving it. But as well, unprompted, he said that he wrote me a little sentence that everyone was, oh, this is so great, you're doing this, so great, you're doing this. And they said, but I want to show that I have a demanding job and it is the skills I gained while completing my engineering degree that I value and use on a daily basis. Oops. All right, and next friend of mine, Kayla Dixon, she um, was from Thunder Bay and she came down here for her five years and then moved back home. She, I would like to highlight her actually because this was really interesting, or I thought it was anyway. She, um, when she moved back to Thunder Bay, she worked in pavement, so she spent 10 years building roads. And she actually got really sick of that. She was bored and she said, I've got to find a new job. So she was looking through the papers and she saw this position at T Bay Tel, which is the Thunder Bay Telephone Company. And it said, it was for project managing, but it said you have to have at least five to 10 years minimum experience in telecommunications. I remember talking to her on the phone and she was like, I have no bother, it sounds interesting, I can't apply for this, like I'm, I've been building roads for 10 years. And I was like, you know, why can it hurt? You know, it'll be good uh, practice for interviewing anyway. So she went ahead and interviewed and there was a, at least 50 people that they'd interviewed. Anyway, she stood out because of all the skills that, well it was for project managing which she had been doing, but it was all this, the skill, the, the, the skill set that she had gained as an engineer far outshined the fact that she didn't have any experience in telecommunications and she was the one that got the job out of all those 50 people that were interviewed. So it was really good. And finally, 
just one other friend of mine, Andrea Maines. Again, she worked, she also worked transportation for I think 12 years, went back and did her MBA, and now she's working at a, one of the major Canadian banks, investing everybody's money. But she as well wrote this at the end of her email. There was no doubt that getting my engineering degree and working in the engineering field provided me with a great opportunity to springboard me into my next career. When I meet people at work and they find out I'm an engineer, not only are they impressed, but they also immediately know that I have solid quantitative skills and that I can do the math. So yeah, so this was a... Uh... Anyway, so what does this mean for you all right now? Well, from, well, I guess I didn't realize there was actually grade 10s here. So some of you have already gone through the process of actually having to pick electives. For those of you where your, your daughters are younger, some of you still have three or four years before you have to start worrying about university, or, but in the next couple of years, you're going to have to be worrying about uh, picking your electives. It's therefore extremely important that you are informed of her choices and where those choices can lead her. And the number of times I've had parents crying, saying, if only I'd known this two years ago. And you don't want to be one of those parents, because it is quite frustrating. So basically, I'm just get to know the choices and really get to know the university guidance counselors that you have at the school, because they're there for you to use them. And they're the ones that know everything. And your, well, and your math teachers and science teachers get to know them because you use them. And if, your child who is a, if you have a child who's unsure of her career path, but she likes math and science, keep in mind that engineering is a fantastic program on so many levels. Not only is the career itself interesting and fulfilling, but it can also lead to so many other opportunities that other programs can't. Um, and then finally, my mom always said, the only thing you owe your child is an education. She actually had this taped to our fridge. <laughs> and <laughs> just so we wouldn't bugger about other things, I guess. But you know, now that I have three kids of my own, you know, I agree with her. I just want to add to her quote and say, so make sure it's a good one. <laughs> anyway, so thank you.